Hey everybody, before we get this video started on my next contest prep update, this is going to be your little intro, I would say, before the intro, um, I want to talk about something really, really quick. Um, lately, with talking with potential clients, just people that are trying to get in better shape, and a lot of my posts on my Instagram, if you're not following that, you should, uh, Robinson DUP on Instagram. I tend to post a lot of things that come across as like I'm trying to bash or ruin somebody's attempt at getting into shape. Um, and that is by far the furthest thing I'm trying to do. Actually, I'm trying to encourage people to, not for bodybuilding or competing, but just how they can reach their fitness goals in a reasonable, logical way um, without having to use these black or white extreme type diets or caloric restrictions or elimination of certain types of foods from their diet um, type of methods that are just being used like I, I don't understand since I was a kid in the 1980s to now it's like the same crap just keeps getting recycled like over and over again as the next miracle thing so I'll give you an example um, you know people before were like the Atkins diet like it was carbohydrate restriction you lose weight and it's just this magic bullet and then all of a sudden, okay, well, the Atkins diet ends and you go back to eating the same way and then you end up putting on more body fat and feeling worse and looking worse than you did before. Or people who now keto is back with a vengeance. I don't know why keto keeps coming in and out, but everything's like keto is this magical fat burning diet. No, that's not how ketosis works. That's not what keto is about. If you're in a caloric restriction with keto, which means you're eating uh, a moderate protein with a higher fat um, intake, and little to no carbohydrate, you're basically reducing uh, caloric intake, therefore re re potentially losing in, uh, potentially uh, resulting in weight loss or fat loss. But it's not this magical fat loss diet. Like I don't understand where, ke where everybody's like, oh, we're going on keto. First of all, it doesn't work for everybody and keto is great in certain instances. It's not meant for everyone. It doesn't fit in everybody's lifestyle. Does it work in certain instances? Sure. But it's not like better than a diet with carbohydrates in it. It's just not. It's a choice of lifestyle. It's like the same people who choose to be vegan. They want to cherry pick data off and create horrible biased documentaries with what the hell to only prove their argument. And granted, it's done all over the place by all sides. Don't get me wrong. But if you choose to be vegan because it's an ethical choice and you know how to structure a property to make sure that you're getting the nutrients that you need, then great. Be vegan and that's an ethical choice it's not a miraculous cure to everybody's dietary issues it's not going to necessarily save the world um and it's not going to necessarily gonna guarantee but it's going to get better health results or fitness results or less body fat because you're vegan so the point of my message is that there is balance it there first of all there's no magic bullet not yet maybe one day there will be yeah, but as of now there isn't sorry um, the quick fix will be get you a quick fix and then when the quick fix is over you're going to go back to doing what you did before and end up basically ruining your body composition over time because you're just going to yo-yo all over the place. So the point of my posts are I want you to truly understand get it out of your head there is no magical fix. There isn't. If there was trust me I know about it by now. There isn't. Um, if it is it's only being released to people I guess with enough money. I don't know but it doesn't exist. So if you want to have a certain type of physique or drop body fat in a healthy way, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes consistency over a course of time. And you have to keep that up from now for the rest of your life. It's not a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day thing. It's not a two day thing. It's not an eight hour workout. It's none of those things. Okay. So there's a lot of different methods to get there, but there's no magical solution. One size fits all that works. Is that clear? Okay, I want everybody to reach their goals. I just don't want you to do stupid things putting your health at risk or thinking that this thing over here is so much more magical than this thing over here. It's not how it works. All right, guys, on to the contest prep video. Yo everybody, I hope you enjoyed the intro to this video. Um, now we're gonna start talking about my contest prep and what the hell is going on. So, 
Um, as we talked about the last time, I was about 184, 184 and a half. We were doing uh, refeeds of 305 grams. And we were hoping for a little bit more loss of weight this week. However, it, it didn't really kind of happen. By the time I weighed in with my coach, I was about 184 flat. Um, but then this morning, Saturday, I was 183 and a half. So there was a slight little tweak. Um, so went to my coach, told him what was going on. We're going to make some adjustments again. Let me stand back a little bit. I don't stand too close. Um, we are doing a back-to-back -back refeed. So that means today, Saturday, and tomorrow, Sunday. Instead of doing a 305 gram, we're going to do two more medium carbohydrate days. We're going to do 255 grams of carbs today and 255 grams tomorrow. My protein and my fat are staying exactly the same. We're not going to fiddle with those. There's no reason to. Uh, in hopes that it's going to give me a quick little uh, energy boost and give me a little bit of a spike. Um, and then by the end of this week, we'll have a little bit more weight loss. We are still not introducing cardio yet, but we're going to see what happens by the end of this week because we may start to lightly cycle it in just to create a little bit more of a caloric deficit, aiding me in fat loss. Um, the one thing I do like is, as you can see, like I've dropped 14 pounds and this is an extra large shirt and I'm still um, hugging the sleeves here. Now, with full disclosure, I did do an upper body workout much earlier today, like 10 a.m. It's now 10.30 p.m. So, but nonetheless, I mean, with 14 pounds down, I'm still filling in an XL. So I feel good that at least I don't feel like I'm shrinking away and I'm maintaining a lot of my mass. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't complain. Let's see if we can, you can still see my arms got a good size to it here. Um, I can see that I'm getting a little bit more feathered. My legs are starting to come in a little bit better. Um, but so far, everything's moving relatively smoothly. Would I, would I have liked to have been more like 183, 182 and a half by the end of this week? Sure, but there's no rush. I've still got 11 weeks left. Um, the main thing I'm focusing on now are using, uh, making sure I'm getting enough nutrients in because as calories are coming down, uh, fiber is becoming more and imp more important, obviously, to keep everything moving. Um, that's what helps you go to the bathroom. I know that sounds disgusting, but as calories come down, that fiber becomes an issue. So I am focusing on things that get me fiber, like my oats and my vegetables, um, which also helps me with food volume, helps me feel more satiated and full. But nonetheless, um, it is getting to the point where I can feel like, you probably see my face a little bit, um, I do feel more tired. Motivation comes and goes. I'm having some good days and some bad days, but the main thing is I'm coming in, I'm doing the workouts, um, I'm fulfilling the rep ranges that I'm supposed to be, and I'm using the heaviest weight I possibly can. I am still not backing off as far as as far as I can. And honestly, my strength is doing very very well. So just hold on here. You know, I'm gonna try to keep pushing this as hard as I can to maintain size. As usual, the one thing I'm really gonna be curious to see are what my legs are gonna look like. They are by far, by far the largest they've ever been. Um, by no means impressive, but for me, they by far look the best. Um, the, the cuts and the definition look better. I am starting to see some feathering in my quadriceps, so I'm curious to see how that's gonna turn out. Um, I have spent a lot of time focusing, um, even before this, but now even more so, focusing on my glutes to bring them up um, because I have, my glutes are small. Um, so I'm trying to, th to thicken them up and make them fuller to obviously get better symmetry and fullness uh, for throughout my entire body. But that's part of the reason why we're focusing on it. So I've been using things like hip thrusters a lot, um, the abductor machines. That's so weird <laughs> doing these kind of things. But I've also been focusing on doing a lot of lunges, uh, Bulgarian split squats, all which help to target my hamstrings and my glutes a little bit more. Or at least they, this is what I feel when I do them anyway. So I've been using a lot of those exercises, unilateral exercises, things like that, to focus on developing, one, uh, fixing the imbalances, but also developing my, my glutes uh, a little bit more. All right, guys, um, I don't have much more else to state. I mean, literally the macros are what they are, and we're going to see what happens this next week. I hope you're enjoying the vlogs. Talk to you soon.